Joining me today is neuroscientist and author of The Memory Cure, Dr. Majid Fatoui. Welcome. And Thank you. our viewers, Sarah, Gina, and Janet. Sarah, you're in your 20s. You're representing that age group. Yes. Gina, you're in your 40s. And Janet, you claim to be in your 60s, <laughs> but you look amazing. Thank I want to thank you for joining us today. Now, you all have family members who've been affected by Alzheimer's disease. And we really want to learn a little bit more about the brain today. And most importantly, what we can do starting now to help prevent or reduce the risk of this disease. So we're going to start with an anatomy lesson here. So we have a, a real human brain here which weighs about three pounds. And Dr. Fatui, I want you to point out to people, just like every other part of our body, as we age, so does the brain. What's really the key point in terms of the anatomy that ages as we age in the brain? This is an example of a healthy brain. With healthy brain, there's not much atrophy on top of the brain. However, there is some atrophy in the area of the brain called hippocampus. So that's the shrinking that you're talking yes, about. Yes, it's about the size of your thumb. It sits deep in the brain, one mm -hmm. on the left, one on the right. And this is the part that shrinks about 0.5% after age 50. Oh, okay. So that's not such good news. But let's take it from this big brain, to, if you will, to what's going on inside the brain. So we have an animation of actually what's going on in Alzheimer's disease, which has to do with the nerve cells or neurons that you can see there that fire and they send communication or signals to other parts of the brain. And in Alzheimer's disease, these nerve cells actually, they become less effective at this method of communication. They shrink, they die off, and the entire brain actually shrinks in terms of its volume. So Dr. Fatui, you also brought with us a brain of someone who actually died of Alzheimer's disease. So can you show us on that brain exactly how it's different from the normal brain? You can see a major contrast between these two brains. A patient who has had Alzheimer's disease has a great deal of atrophy on the surface of the brain. These are parts of the brain for thinking, for language, and for memory. Usually you cannot put anything in space in between mm -hmm. the hills on the brain. Mm -hmm. But with a person who has had Alzheimer's disease, there's a lot of atrophy, a lot of space. It's a little surprising when you see yeah. it actually. Yes, the brain right. shrinks about 20 to 30 percent. Right. It, it, it shrinks 20 to 30 percent. Exactly. That's incredible. Now, what about some outward signs and symptoms? Janet, actually, your father had Alzheimer's disease. What were some of the first things that you noticed? Well, it, you know, he had the normal memory loss as he was aging, but then a, a critical time was when one night he, he put on my mother's coat and he started to leave the house and he wanted to go back home. And so he actually ended up running away. And that was the point where we realized that there was something serious and we needed to get a medical diagnosis. So Dr. Fatui, what would you say in terms of overall dementia, what, how would you describe that? I think it is kind of normal to forget um, names of people you meet a few times or um, if you go to a room and say, why did I come here for? But it is not normal to, to do what Janet's forget names of did. children right. or get lost driving to your own home. So dementia is kind of the overall umbrella term to describe these changes in memory or difficulties with language or judgment. Alzheimer's disease is a subset of that, but it's the most common form of dementia. And I don't know if some of you ladies, are you familiar with Pat Summit, the, that famous college basketball yes. coach? She publicly announced and bravely announced that she is retiring because of a diagnosis of early onset Alzheimer's, which means she was diagnosed before the age of 65. So, so important for people to realize it's not just an old person's disease. So Sarah, you're, you're so young, but what are some of your questions about preventing this? Well, I think, I mean, really it was just about how you can tell the difference between someone just getting older and someone who actually has dementia. And, you know, are there signs that you can see so that you're able to know what the differences are? And yes. That's, that's the important thing, by the way, is that, and Janet, you said this with your father, you might notice it in someone else. You might not be able to notice it in yourself, obviously, if you're going through these problems. Yes, so if somebody appears to be confused, it's not always Alzheimer's disease. They could be uh, sleep deprived. Uh, they could be too tired, but if something persists and like you were saying does something that is really out of ordinary, that's concerning. 
And I think also, as we mentioned, you know, occasional forgetting is very, very common. If you're finding with your daily tasks or you're watching someone in your family perhaps struggle with their daily task and take longer and longer to do the same things that they do all the time, there could be a problem there. It's not just in remembering names. It's also in judgment, in language. And if you see any of these things, it's so important to have that person evaluated by a doctor. You usually start with a general internist, but then if necessary, a neurologist, obviously. Now, Gina, you have an incredible story about watching your wedding video and, and what you noticed in your mom. Yes, uh, my husband and I got married before there was any diagnosis. And in the wedding video, my mother was interviewed to give us her blessing and good wishes. And when she was talking, she mentioned the wrong date. You know, at that time, I didn't even realize it. I choked it up to nerves. But in the video, looking back, I feel that that may have been a sign. So I think the key point there for, for everyone, for all of us, is be aware of your family members. And if you see anything that's out of the ordinary, don't be so quick to dismiss it. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. The reason we're here is actually there's a lot of good news in this area of research, Dr. Fatui. And talking about risk factors, there's not much we can do to change our family history or our age, obviously. But talk about some of the things that we can do today that can reduce our risk of Alzheimer's down the road. Well, the good news is that you can actually increase the size of your brain. When it comes to size brain, size matters. <laughs> okay. When it comes to brain, size does matter. Okay. There are at least three things you could do to increase the size of uh, your brain, and especially the part of the brain for memory. Those three things are increasing your fitness doing memory exercises and actually meditation. So exercise, uh, you all exercise, I hope. Mm -hmm. Meditation. Yep. Mm -hmm. And mental exercise. <laughs> no. <laughs> meditation, Gina, not so Gina, much. Gina, take a moment, please. So just quickly, <laughs> go down, uh, basically based by age, what should someone in their 20s start to do? OK. Um, Sarah, I recommend that you remember three or seven names every day. Work up that memory muscle. Increase your fitness. You're in great shape already, but increase your fitness. And uh, eat a heart-healthy diet that's rich in omega-3 fatty acids, such as salmon or other uh, fish. And, and that's very important. We always say what's good for the heart is good for the brain and vice versa. The brain doesn't like smoking, neither does the heart. And the brain likes exercise just like the heart does. So you have a, a checklist. What about for someone like Gina in their 40s? I have uh, three recommendations for you. I would like you to sleep seven hours every night. Do I, Hold on. Okay. <laughs> seven hours. That's Do you get that? Okay. No. <laughs> And I'd like you to reduce stress as much as possible. Okay. Stress is one of the worst things for the brain. And lastly, I'd like you to, t to take a dance class. I would love that, because <laughs> that's learning something new. It cross-trains the different parts of your brain at the same time. Interesting. So it's not only learning something new, but it's an exercise and it involves different parts of the brain. And lastly, what about someone, Janet claims she's in her 60s, but she looks amazing, but well, what about someone in their 60s? It's never too late. Yes, Janet, I had a chance to talk with you earlier. It sounds like you're doing all the right things. You exercise, you write a book. Uh, and you also mentioned that you're a vegetarian. Yes. So my suggestion, my only recommendation to you is to try to take DHA from algae. There's a form of DHA called algal DHA. Okay. And one study showed that people who take algal DHA perform better in memory. Uh, tests. And very important for people of all ages, reduce the risk of falls, protect our heads when we're younger, helmets, concussion risk factors are so important. But thank you so much, Dr. Fatui and ladies, for sharing your, your stories with us. And here's to healthy brains for all of us for the future. Coming up next, Joan London shares her advice for how families can support each other through Alzheimer's. We'll be right back.